Hi, this is Michael Collins for the Nebraska Tourism Commission, and I'm here to talk to you today about how to tap into the group tour market. And if you have questions uh, that you'd like to have me answer after the presentation, you can email Jen Jurdy. Her email address is right there. Uh, you can email her, and uh, she can get them to me at the end of the session, at the end of the presentation. Um, let's start with what are we going to learn while we're in this while we're in this session. What is the definition of a group tour? You can know what that is. The economic impact of the group tour industry. What group operators require when choosing a destination. How to become group ready. How to be more active in the state's group tour industry and national group tour associations and conferences that we attend. And if this is the, the presentation I gave at the tourism conference in La Vista this past October. Uh, so. Um, it's a little bit longer then, so I'll be running through things a lot more quickly this time. So if you have any questions uh, th that we don't have time to answer, you can always email me or contact me or call me and I can answer your questions. That way my information will be at the end of the session. Okay, now let's get started. People like to go tanking. That's, that's a very fun group activity. So first of all, what is a group tour? Group tours basically organize package tours that build the cost of meals, transportation, lodging, admission to events and attractions, all into one overall price. Uh, groups vary in size. Sometimes there are as few as five or six people. Uh, sometimes there's as large as 45 to 55 people uh, in a group. So really there's no set number of, of, uh, for a group. It's just whatever you want it to be. Three people is the group. Um, and group tours, the benefit with them is that they let visitors explore and experience activities that are normally not available to the general traveler. They're, they're offered exclusively for groups. The economic impact of groups, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Um, for the United States as, as a whole, the impact on groups is $228 billion. Uh, wages and jobs, uh, federal tax generated. Um, are uh, quite substantial in the group tour market nationally, but also for Nebraska. It's $1.38 billion um, for the impact on just Nebraska, with wages of $413 million, and over 12,000 people work in the group tour industry uh, across the state. Uh, now, one thing people want to know is what do operators choose? What do they look for when choosing a destination for their itineraries? Obviously, the first one is location. Uh, is your destination along an existing tour route or within a short drive? Um, is it easy for the motor coach to, to get to, to drive to? What type of roads are there? Um, are they paved, gravel, dirt? Uh, has a lot to do with um, whether a coach can go down that road or not. And also are branches or other hazards hanging over the road that could hit the motor coach? Uh, these are quite expensive vehicles that they're driving around, so they don't want to have branches hanging over that could scratch the coach, the top of the coach. So location is the first thing. Cleanliness, kind of self-explanatory there, is a destination clean, inviting, and welcoming to visitors. Uh, restrooms and on-site dining areas clean and well-maintained. And are there enough restrooms? Uh, that's one thing people kind of forget with the group tour market. If you have 45 people come into your, your establishment, whether it's an attraction or a business or a restaurant, you're going to have to have enough restrooms uh, to accommodate those, th those larger groups. Uh, the group drop-off points and pickup points. Is there adequate room, adequate room for the coach to load and load passengers? Is it near the front of the, uh, the entrance? Uh, this is really important for handicapped and older clients who might be, not be able to walk as, as far. So if you have something near the front of the entrance, that's, that's perfect. And there's adequate space for the driver to park the motor coach, because while you're in there visiting and, and doing things, whether it's a mill or an attraction, visiting attraction, the motor coach has to have a place to park. So that's very, very important. Um, interactive experience and activities. Uh, the days are gone where groups just want to drive and look at stuff and behind a velvet rope or uh, behind a glass or something like that. They are not content with that anymore. They don't want to passively, passively observe anything anymore. Uh, they want to become involved, get their hands dirty, and really experience a destination. Uh, the baby boomers and younger generations, millennials, Generation X, they're the ones requesting that the industry offers more interactive and educational experiences. And uh, these are the ones that are starting to more travel more and more today. They are changing the face and future of the group tour industry. VIP and behind the scenes experience is very, very, very important. Uh, the groups like to feel special and do things not available to the general traveler. Some of these things include guided tours of areas that are normally off visits to the general visitor, such as a backstage tour to theater, uh, maybe a chance to meet and talk with some of the actors, behind the scenes tours at a zoo to interact with animals, assist with feeding, petting the, the animals, just anything like that that an average traveler cannot do. Also, um, 
Group only entertainment activities, uh, such as entertainment during a theme dinner, such as a Polish entertainment and mill, an Irish dinner, Irish mill and entertainment, historic character reenactments, living history demonstrations, uh, Buffalo Bill. Uh, in North Platte, they have a, uh, a Buffalo Bill uh, will come and kind of talk to you about his house and, and his life and all that. Uh, but also works of art that, that the group members can take home with them. So you go like Prairie Arts Center again in North Platte. You can go there. You can. Uh, There'll be a, a, an artist there, she'll walk you to the steps of, of the painting and you do your own painting, have some wine while you're there, some cheese, um, and you get to take that home with you, which is uh, something that's, that's um, a memory of your trip. Special discounted group rates, uh, group tours represent volume business, but also they represent repeat business. And if operators don't you're willing to work with them, offer their clients something unexpected, they will use your destination property in the future. Um, uh, that more so than if group is, uh, destination does not work with the group. Uh, so always, always, always uh, provide good discounted group rates for groups. Attraction entrance fees, admission fees, tickets for concerts, performances, other events, special group lodging and dining rates. Uh, cost definitely is a major factor when operators plan their itineraries they're looking for the, the, best, the best value for their dollar um, that they can then pass on to their clients. Um, obviously good quality lodging and dining options. Uh, these are two of the most expensive parts of any group tour itinerary, so they want to get their money's worth. Uh, some operators require lodging that's acceptable to clients' needs and wants. They want to have, they know what their clients want, and they, they'll be looking for that. Some require three to five star hotels, national chains. Others uh, looking for, for more laid back accommodations, unique out of the ordinary accommodations. So really, it all depends on the operator and their clients. But the more perks and add-ons you can add on, the, the better they'll, they'll use your destination or property. Uh, lodging accommodations, again, offer group rates, discounts, and special deals. Comped items, breakfast or dinner, it says the Drury Hotel's 530 kickback. Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi, um, you can require a password, that's fine, but uh, there's nothing more frustrating to a group operator than they get there and they have to pay for the Wi-Fi, so free Wi-Fi is always a good thing. Happy hour, embassy suites, evening reception. Lodging for motor coach, driver, and group operator, definitely want to have um, comped items, comp, uh, rooms for them. Uh, also, laundry dry cleaning services, especially if you're on longer group itineraries. Uh, some groups itineraries only like three or four days. Others can be 15, 16, 20 days. So, you know, if you're going to work with the operators, say, hey, we'll wash your clothes for your clients, dry cleaning your, your clothes for your clients. That's a, a special perk for them. Uh, give guests a small token of appreciation and thanks, uh, such as a small gift bag of locally made products upon arrival, uh, cheese and fruit plate in the guest room when they arrive. Uh, make sure that the, if you're at a lodging property, the general manager, the sales manager, the front desk manager, the owner, someone should be on hand to greet the, the tour upon arrival and to welcome them. And that goes a long way because that shows you care about the operator, you care about the group. Treat the group and the operator as special VIPs. Again, it goes back to they want to feel special. They're paying for this, they want to feel special. So if you go out of your way to be accommodating operators, they will use you for future itineraries. And one thing to remember, Operators, they talk to each other. They all know each other, and they will share the good, the bad, or the ugly, and the last thing you want to do is, is be blacklisted uh, that, you don't, that you don't work with operators. Dining establishments. One of the biggest things is how will the group order at restaurants? This is really important for larger groups. Will they order from the restaurant's regular menu, a limited selection of dishes to choose from, or dine buffet style? Again, it depends on the size of the group. If you have 45 people, 55 people coming into your restaurant, you probably won't want to order off the menu, but instead have one or two dishes that they can choose from, or even a buffet. It's always a good thing to offer a comp beverage, um, alcoholic or non-alcoholic, appetizer and or dessert. Uh, so if, if someone doesn't want a dessert after dinner, box it up for them, they can, they can take it to the room and, and enjoy it later. Uh, treat groups, again, as VIPs. See them in a private dining area. Don't just put them where, they're, where everybody else sits. They're special. They want to, they want to feel special. Appoint servers to wait exclusively on the group. So you don't have an op, uh, a server working three tables over here and also the group over here. They're dedicated specifically for that group. Again, a local made item at a, at a small gift at each place setting. Just a little added benefit, a little added touch for them. Highlight any dishes you're known for, the restaurant's known for, if, it, if it's a steak or a pasta or whatever, uh, or even if it's a signature alcoholic drink or something like that, you'll highlight that. Uh, after dinner, it's always a good thing to have uh, um, entertainment, music, dancing, reenactors, storytellers, anything that, that um, makes, it more than just a, makes it more than just a meal that then becomes an experience. 
and also bring the, the chef out so that the group can be introduced to him or her and, and thank them for, for, the, for the meal. Uh, your attitude, that's also very, very important. A positive attitude, attitude of the part of management staff and anyone who comes into contact with groups is important to encourage group uh, repeat business from operators. Go the extra mile. Greet groups at each stop on the itinerary. Again, a small token of appreciation or a gift before they leave. Um, offer light refreshments or snacks, especially if meal time is not uh, is not coming up. Um, does it be an expensive popcorn or bottled water, or something like that, to let them take on the coach? They can they can enjoy on their on the ride. Um, if someone's having a special event, a birthday, anniversary, graduation, anything that um, is a, a celebration, make them feel special and celebrate that event. And you could find that from. Um, the, from the group operator. When you be with the group operator, just say, hey, is, is my having a birthday while well, you know while they're gonna be in my, my area. And what do you need to do to make sure that you're group ready? Um, well first of all, it's a pretty straightforward question. You know, follow the guidelines that we are that I just talked about in the previous section about what operators want. Uh, but also ask yourself three very, very, very important questions. Uh, am I even sure I want to enter the group tour market? It's a big commitment and often takes a while to encourage group operators to include you on their itineraries. So you got to make sure that you even want to do it. Do you enjoy working with large groups of people from different social and economic backgrounds? Because not everyone's going to agree with you, politically, religiously, socially, whatever. There's lots of different people coming through your, your area or your attraction or your business. So you've got to be open to everybody. And also, do you have the financial ability, resources, and innovation to enter the group tour market and be successful? It does take a lot of time, energy, and effort on your part to be a group destination, but once you are, and once you do, the benefits are, 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 are great. Okay, so you answered answer those three questions, now what do we do? Well, the first thing is you become active in the state's group tour industry, and the number one thing you need to do is contact the Nebraska Tourism Commission's group travel manager, which is me, uh, and invite me to your destination to show me what kind of things you have, what you can offer groups. Uh, let me see it firsthand, so that way I can sell it when I go out to my, my um, uh, group things that I go to. I can sell what you have and I can encourage groups to come to your area. I can also work with you to brainstorm new ideas, concepts, and features that you offer to make your destination more attractive and memorable to operators when they plan their itineraries. So take something just normal and make it extraordinary. Also make contact with other, other Nebraska group destinations. There are other people across the state who are active in the, in the group industry. For example, the Omaha CBB, Sarpy County Tourism, Lincoln CBB, Grand Island Hall County, Kearney, North Platte, the Golden Spike, um, and Garing CBB and the West Tourism Coalition are, are getting into um, the group market. And also Northeast Nebraska, they're looking at, they're also trying to, to do more things up there to bring, to bring groups. So even though we already have people working in the group industry here, there's always room for more. Uh, and you know, meet with some of these people that are on this list and, and other places and kind of talk to them and, and see how you can work together. Because you know, we want to create partnerships. Uh, because selling Nebraska to national group to operators works better when we in the industry all work together. So partner with me, partner with other people in the, in the industry. Uh, create a group tour section on your website. Update it with new activities, experiences, destinations, services, itineraries. And also attend national group tour conventions and marketplaces, which I'll be talking about those shortly. Develop sample itineraries. Um, these sample itineraries they give give operators an idea of things that you can do, things that you can offer to their to their uh, to their clients. Uh, theme and unique itineraries are really what operators are looking for, so they are uh, looking for this one that's out of the ordinary. And so, how do you take something ordinary and make it extraordinary? It's got to be creative. And here's an example, um, and I'll just kind of go briefly over some, uh, some things here, but this is a, uh, an uh, itinerary that I kind of come up with, um, other things I've learned, kind of put into this, but I call it Exit Stage Left, and the group arrives at the theater, the staff member will greet them dressed in a director's outfit or as a celebrity, so the minute they walk in, they are, they're meeting somebody to take them around. So they do a short presentation, and then they're going on a personal guided VIP tour of the theater, especially backstage. Places where I can't usually go if I walk into a theater, if I walk backstage, I'll probably get arrested. But if I go with the group, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, exciting, it's an exciting thing to do. Um, I can meet, um, um, let me see. Oh yeah, after the tour, um, 
let the group meet with one or two actors who can kind of talk to them about their experiences and get them inside information about the theater world. You know, some kind of secrets and jokes and, and things they play on each other, but just kind of let the, the groups feel that, you know, they're, they're you know, an, an actor themselves. And then, um, open curtains. And then if space is available then at the theater, the group can enjoy a, a private catered dinner Followed by entertainment. If they can't have it there, then they can have it someplace else, and and um, come and to the theater later on. But um, at exclusive events, the group can dine with actors from a recent or upcoming production, and preferably with the actors in character. Um, that's all. That'd be awesome. A cool thing. So, like, if you're doing um, a Christmas story or Christmas Carol, then you can have some of the actors there in character, and they can have dinner with uh, with the actors, and you can have a dinner that's uh, kind of what you would have during during that time. Uh, so it'd be kind of a, an added an ad experience. And after dinner, they go to the theater for the performance. And again, VIP treatment. They priority check in an entrance, preferably private entrance if you can, if not, um, but they priority check in. Private reserve seating near the stage. You want to get them really good seats. A private bar and standing area during, during intermission, again, where they can go and, and feel um, special. Uh, private VIP restroom access. That's something that's, you know, Again, people need to go to the bathroom, and if they have a, 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 a private place to go, that's even better. And also autograph programs from the performance. So it's all about making the group feel like celebrities. And the other one I have is called Artists for a Day. Again, the, they, upon arrival, they, they're met by someone who is in the character of an artist, um, or a, you know, a painter or something like that, who would then tend to a VIP room to do a short presentation and introduction to the museum. Uh, and after the presentation, the guide then leads them to uh, different experiences in the museum for hands-on interactive activities I've offered on the tour. Um, and the first one is called Sit and Sketch. And the, uh, the uh, artist or the staff person at the museum will give the group, each person in the group, a bag of sketch pens, a sketch pad, a small folding seat to use throughout the tour. They'll go to a sculpture either inside or outside the museum. The um, artist will tell the story of that piece, what they're looking at, and then he'll just say, hey, just st draw the sculpture, draw it yourself, you know, just try your hand at, at drawing this. And then you first draw with your eyes open, then they can say, okay, look at it again, draw it with your eyes closed, um, draw it from memory uh, on another sketch pad. Another one's called Copycats. Uh, the group is led to a second activity in the museum, either they're to a, a painting, and then they just basically so they just and try to copy the painting in their sketch pads. And then third activity is draw what you want. And so you're taken to a room, there's paintings all around the room, and you can look at certain parts of uh, the painting and draw whatever you want to, kind of recreate it however you see it in your mind, however you want to do it. So that way you have something in that you can take home. And the point of this is to give the group a true artistic experience. Fam tours and um, site visits, personal site visits, are very important to really get the operators to see what you have, experience what you have. Uh, fam tours highlight the destinations group activities to operators. Um, they really should be no longer than four to five days if covering a larger area, one to two days if you're in a small area or, or within a city. Um, give operators enough time to review their schedules to see if they can, so that, if they can put it on the calendar to go on it. Uh, and everyone participating in the FAM tour must maintain the highest level of customer service and satisfaction. This is very important because you're putting your best foot forward to these operators. Uh, one thing is very important to, to remember and to realize, a FAM tour should be pay to play. Everybody on the FAM tour has to financially contribute something to that tour so that everything for the operators is comped. It's lodging, meals, uh, transportation, Admission fees, anything like that, has to be paid for either by the local CVB tourism group um, or the attraction or business itself has to put something into it to be on to be on the fam tour. And you know, and it, then it really is up to the fam tour host if they want to cover transportation costs for the operators to get to the destination, such as airfare and mileage. Some do, some don't. It just depends on the, the size of the, the fam tour and how long it's going to be and, and where they're coming from. But I guess remember, pay to play is the main, the, the big thing. Side visits are pretty much the same thing as a fam tour, but it's only with one or two operators. The good thing about a side visits like this is that uh, they're more intimate, more personal with the operators. You can give them more experiences. You can, you can you sit down one-on-one -on -one with them and talk to them. So a lot of people do like to have one or two um, 
site visits also scheduled throughout the year with operators. And uh, again, I want to just, you know, important, when offering FAM tours and personalized site visits, remember that group operators are not your average travelers you know, that you're showing around. These are people who can, who can bring business to your destination and the area, and uh, your area, for many, many years. So you always have to put your best foot forward uh, for the operators and just take whatever happens and roll with it and, um, and just put your best foot forward and really show them a great time. You also can apply for a state marketing grant through the Tourism Commission. So there is financial help available. Um, the maximum amount to request is $25,000. And you can use grant funds to cover registration fees uh, to attend one or more selected national group marketplaces, which I'll be talking about shortly, like I said. Um, do a, a group profile sheet. Uh, develop a group tour website on your website if you want to, either part of your website or a whole different website. And also produce a printed group, a group tour planner, which you'll see um, on the screen here, that's the my group planner for this year. And I change it like but every every year to every two years, depending on what's going on. Um, but I do like to, to change it up every year, if possible, every other year. So you can like I said, you can't apply for marketing grants to do that. And here's the grant schedule. And the right here you also see that's my profile sheet for this year that I'll be taking to operate to show operators um, at the different shows that I go to change a little bit from here, but that's um, that's for the most part what it, what it looks like. But the uh, guidelines are available in October. The application deadline postmarked is December the 15th. Um, announcements are January 31st, 2018. And uh, deadline for project reimbursement is May 31st, 2019. Uh, so you have a, a quite some time to, to um, do different activities um, for, these, for these grants. Uh, now let's talk about different group tour associations and conferences. Uh, the main ones that we go to, American Bus Association, National Tour, National Tour Association, Travelize Partners, Select Traveler Conference, and we're also going to one called IPW, which is um, U.S. Travels, used to be called International Pow Wow, um, but it's IPW, it's in Denver this year, and so uh, we'll be going to that again starting, uh, going to that again this year if I don't have it on here yet. But ABA, um, just a little bit of um, information about what ABA is. Um, it's a motor coach, um, motor coach group, motor coach association. Um, their website is buses.org. So if you want more information about ABA and what it is, uh, that's a place where you can go. And the thing about ABA that's coming up, I'm very, very excited about, is that um, Omaha will be the site for the 2020 annual meeting and marketplace for ABA. Uh, it's January the 10th through the 14th of 2020. And it's a, it's a, it's a big dang deal for Nebraska and for, for, and for the city of Omaha. Uh, we're very happy to have them come here um, to bring their, their marketplace here. They've never been in the Midwest before. They've never been in the central part of the country before. So um, they were really looking forward to coming to ABA. So I know that Omaha CBB is going to be working really hard to kind of get sponsorships and work with our partners across the state. So, um, you know, when they do contact you, if they do contact you, definitely listen to them and, you know, see how you can help have me a partner uh, with Omaha CBB on ABA. Uh, if, and if they don't contact you, contact them. You know, ask them, say, hey, how, how, can, how can we work with you to bring ABA here and get them a great time? So, um, that, you know, that is something that's really big that's coming up um, in 2020. A National Tour Association, it's another group uh, tour association uh, that's, um, that has, they also have a marketplace too. Uh, the closest that we've had one here was in Kansas City a few years ago, but um, uh, we'll be going, getting back into going to these two, but ntaonline.com is their website. Uh, Travel Alliance Partners is a, is a unique type of um, group organization. It's, uh, to go to Tap Dance, which is what they call their, their event, it, it's invitation only. It's limited to 200 people. So uh, you have to be invited by an operator. So if, if, if Tap is something you might want to be interested in getting into, I want to, might want to come to, let me know about it and that I can uh, work with the operators at TAP to uh, get you an invitation to come uh, to, that, to their next uh, uh, TAP dance. And I know that Omaha CBB has gone to it before, uh, Garing CBB, Western Coalition, uh, they've gone to it before, the Carney CBB has gone to it in the past too, so um, there are some Nebraskans who are, are, um, going, who are members of TAP and who, who do go to TAP every year. And we're a sponsor of it, so we, are, we can go every year. Um, Select Traveler Conference uh, used to be called Bank Travel, but they kind of um, expanded it because it's different things in that now. It's, it's also universities, 
um, different groups, different associations, city or associations who were doing groups. So they expanded it from just banks to um, other other places and people who were doing uh, groups. And so there's a selecttravelerconference.com um, for their website. And um, the annual marketplaces that are coming up um, that we'll be going to over the next course, the next few months. Uh, American Bus Association, this year it's going to be January 26th to the 30th in Charlotte, North Carolina. NTA Travel Exchange is going to be this year, 2017. It's in San Antonio, the 14th to the 18th of December. Select Traveler Conference is in Louisville, Kentucky, February the 4th to the 6th of next year. And Travel Alliance Partners 2018 Tap Dance is going to be in Atlantic City, New Jersey on June the 4th to the 8th. And like I said, uh, IPW is in Denver, and I forgot the dates off the top of my head, um, but I think it's like May, June, somewhere around there. But um, I can easily send you information if you're interested in that, so you can also just look, for, look up IPW.com for more information on, on their group. Now, um, who's your group tour contact and tour of the commission? That would be me. So, um, like I said, I know I went this really quickly today, um, trying to you know fit everything in here because it's a it's a great topic and it's a, uh, there's a lot of information in the group tour industry. So, if I went over something too fast or I didn't go over something and you you don't have time to answer your questions today or whatever, then let me know and I can easily uh, talk to you. You can give me a call or email me at this information right here and I'll be glad to sit down with you. And like I said, if you want me to come out and visit with you personally, I'll be glad to do that. Um, I love getting out across the state, especially when it comes to the group market because I think Nebraska has great potential to be a group destination. We just all have to work together to do that. Um, and if you have other questions or have questions for this, webinar today, right now, very right now, right now um, Jen Jurdy um, at Nebraska.gov is the person that you will ask your questions. So, yes, it was a very quick webinar, but got everything in there. Are you ready for questions? I'm ready for questions. Okay, I have just a few for now, but people can keep sending them for the next few minutes. Um, first one's from Crofton, and they wanted to know what FAM tours you're currently planning, and how do you decide those every year? Um, well, the first one we did was last year, and that was from Omaha. It was, the, it was a crane tour, because um, the cranes are obviously a, a draw, a magnet for the state. So I uh, was working with the Omaha CVB, kind of I was talking to Bill Slavinsky about that, and then just kind of mushroomed out to include other people along the way. So that was the first one we did last year, uh, um, in March 2017. Um, so we're going to do that one again in 2018. And then when I did that one, I was talking to some Western Nebraska people, like, hey, we want to do one too. So I've been working with that group, and we're having one coming out to that area uh, also next year. And then um, Northeast Nebraska, we're looking at doing one in Northeast Nebraska next year. Uh, it'd be like a four or five day fam tour for those. So it's really, you know, people, how do we, how we decide on where we're going? Who contacts me and do you have the people and the resources and do you have the group activities to make an operator want to come to your place for four or five days? That's kind of how we decide that. Okay. And I have another one. We're a small economic development office. Where do the little guys find the funding to draw in and host FAM tours? Um, and can the current grant cycle that they've been getting emails about help fund something like that? Um, like an economic development? Office is Office. asking, yeah. Okay. Um, what I would do is work with your um, attractions and your businesses in your area. Um, grants, using marketing grants for that probably would not work. Um, I mean, I would talk to Heather Hogue in the um, Tourism Office to talk to her about that, just to make sure, but I would say no. As for funding, it's just like I said, just work with your industry partners, work with the attractions, work with your businesses and pull your resources, pull your money together. Um, and if you really want to be in the group market, then just give me a call too, and I can sit down with you, and I can learn more about your situation, and I can say, okay, well, let's, here's, here's how we can get funding to include you on this. Um, fam tours, we keep them, the, the one we did in, the first one had uh, eight operators from five different companies. So when I'm looking at fam tours right now, we're keeping them smaller, um, 10 or under, 15 under, depending on, on where they're going and, and who, who wants to go on that tour. So we're not talking about a large 45, 55 uh, 
coach uh, fan tour coming through. We're looking at smaller ones, which is a little bit easier for um, the, the, the little guy to be able to put that in their budgets. Great. I have one more unless somebody else gets me one real quick. Um, and it is, they don't even know where to start with a sample itinerary. You kind of went through it, but do you have any other advice? Just, just where do you start even? Call me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's the main thing. Just, um, it depends on, um, are you working with other people in your area? Are you working with, is it just, just your, your business? Um, things that you can do, just give me a call and like I said, I'll be glad to sit down with you and, and do more of what a sample itinerary is, different activities that you do in your business, because I can see what you do and they're like, okay, hey, well, here's what operators are looking for. Then we can kind of tailor what you have to what operators are looking for. So that's more of a thing where, that's more of a personalized, let's you and I just sit down and, and kind of figure it out. And that's, what the, and that's how the group market is a lot of times is, is uh, you'll have something and you're like, well, do groups like this or do groups want this? And I could come in and say, well, not so much this, but they would like to do this over here. Or you have this activity, let's, let's really make it extraordinary and add this component to it. Uh, so, and, it's, and not everything is gonna be group friendly. Not everything is, not everything is gonna, people wanna go see, group, a group are not, not gonna wanna go see every single thing. So, um, but we can pretty much find a group activity with anything in your area. A lot of times, even if it's a, you have an attraction and you can have a catered meal. And so they can't, they're not gonna stay overnight there. They're not gonna see a lot of things there, but they're gonna go to your museum. They're gonna go to your business. They're gonna go to whatever. And they're gonna have a, 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 a lunch there or a breakfast there. Um, Cause like at the, the Golden Spike Tower, when we do the fam tour out west, uh, we're going to be starting very early in the morning, so kind of going to kill two birds with one stone, and they're going to have breakfast at the Golden Spike. Uh, so that way they can talk to them, they can, they can go to the Spike and have breakfast at the same time. And you can do the same thing for dinner, same thing for, for lunches, and even for snacks. I think we're good. Well, thank you, everybody. And like I said, um, just contact me with any further questions. I'll be glad to come out down and hang out with you and sit down, and we'll, we'll get groups to your area. Um, but... And, and the good thing about Nebraska is uh, some operators like, well, I've never been there before, don't know what's there, and so we got to get them here. And that's why we do fam tours, that's why we do site visits. That's why we're so happy with ABA coming here in 2020. Did we have the operators that are coming here. So anyway, thank you, everybody, and have a great day.